record. Okay, uh, hello. So everyone, hello everyone. My name is Sam Lee and I'm the founder of Canadian Conference. And today I'll be interviewing a special guest. His name is David Newton and he's a YouTuber. And this is episode number 45. And for those who haven't met me before, like I said, my name is Sam Lee and I'm the founder of Canadian Conference. And I'll be the interviewer interviewing David Newton. How are you going, David? Yeah, good, thank you. And thanks for inviting me today. Yes. No worries. Thanks for uh, interviewing me last time. I just want to do, do you back a favor. So yeah, <laughs> crisscross. So yeah, so how was your uh, weekend? Uh, tell me about your weekend, David. What did you do uh, on, on last weekend? Uh, yeah, look, it was really good. I wanted to get out and about a little bit on the Saturday, uh, walk around Circular Quay, enjoy our wonderful uh, harbour views that we've got and a few of the boats that are parked there, as well as... Uh, uh, on the Sunday, I was um, helping out with running our speechcraft course, which is public speaking course, ran in, in two days, not necessarily two days together, mm. uh, but they're usually two weeks apart. Mm. And we had uh, some graduates come out of the class there. So that was a really good day on the Sunday. So uh, all in all, a nice weekend to enjoy. And it was lovely and sunny as well. Very nice. So when you say speech class, I think I've heard speech class, is that similar to Toastmasters or something like that? Uh, it's it's a course that was originally instigated by Toastmasters. Yep. I'm involved with my local Toastmasters club, yep. uh, which uh, at the moment it's it's called Roseville Toastmasters Club, but we're, okay. we're moving to uh, a location in Crow's Nest, so we'll be calling it Inspirational Speakers Toastmasters Club. So that will be the new name of our club. So uh, you're most welcome to come along if you live in the area and uh, join up. So that'll be good. And that way you can learn public speaking and increase your self-confidence. Okay, cool. Sounds great. Nice. You must be going to do a lot, doing a lot of activities. So, so how was um, Circular Key? Was it cold out there? <laughs> Uh, no, not, not on the weekend. Uh, it was quite a, a nice sunny day, probably around about 20 degrees, I think, on yep. the Saturday. Yep. So we were quite lucky. Uh, I just like to go there sometimes to have uh, a coffee and to stare out at the views. And, you know, you've got the harbour bridge and you've also got the opera house. You know the usual stuff we have to put up with living here in Sydney. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> For sure. Nice. <laughs> It's cool. So yeah, David. Uh, so tell me about your hobbies. What do you like to do outside of work? What's your hobbies? What's your passions? What do you like to do? What do you enjoy doing? That's a good question. Thank you. Uh, look, a lot of my hobbies are pretty much what I've been involved in with my uh, uh, with my work endeavors. You might say my self employment endeavors. I like books, so I love writing books. Uh, I've written something like over 60 books, but only 40 of my books are on Amazon. Wow. And that includes fiction books as well, because I write book, fiction books under a wide range of different pen names, uh, which can be everything from rom romantic fiction through to thr uh, political thrillers. I also have a lot of non-fiction books, which I love writing tour guide books, and right through to business books, and even books on how to meet people. Uh, my other hobbies would be uh, like what I do on the weekends, I, uh, I love taking my social group for history walks or art gallery walks in Sydney and Melbourne, um, mm -hmm. because I live in Sydney and Melbourne at the same time. And I also love running lots of events for people. So that could be anything from drinks and nibbles events right through to seminars. Um, I, I guess... I like to pursue everything that I'm interested in uh, as a hobby to make an event for people. So that's it. Yes, I'm, I'm interested in uh, lots and lots and lots of different things. And um, I suppose the more you're interested and the more you're curious, my personal viewpoint is um, there'll always be something new to discover each day. Mm. That's my belief. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Fascinating. Wow. So you're actually over 60 books. That's that's uh, crazy. Like I actually just pu published two books, but you're like a, you published uh, sixty books. That's like uh, at least thirty times my 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 books. So that's really well. Cool. I wrote twenty three of them and self published twenty three of them in just one uh, one calendar year period alone, yeah. just to see what I could potentially do. What my goal was to shoot for fifty books within the year, but I I failed. I only come up with twenty three in in the year. So. Oh, well, you know, 
nothing like at least trying and seeing what you can be capable of. I wrote in one case 12, um, out of that 23 books in one year, I completed and published 12 in 12 weeks. Uh, that's one book released each week in a row. Mm. So, and all it is just a matter of how you structure yourself and discipline yourself to making it happen. And I, that's a lot of time spending in cafes because I would uh, I would go to a cafe, buy a coffee or some nice drink and a cake. So I've already invested about eight or ten dollars already. So I'm not going to get up and leave straight away. So I figure well, I've got to work the next two hours to get a result here. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what what made you become an author? Like what like see let me tell me about your first book. What what, what made, made my you first make book was back in 1985. Um, at that stage, I had an argument with a guy. I was uh, like I was in a temp temp job at the time. I was doing a lot of temp work then. Uh, I had an argument with a guy who kept on requesting information from me about how to write a book and so forth. And I had photocopies in a file at home. So I'd come home, come into the office, photocopy that information and give it to him. And he'd always find some reason why it wouldn't work. And uh, one of my friends uh, came over for dinner on a Wednesday night and she worked for a publishing house. And she said, ask him if he's got a manuscript. My boss might be able to look at it for him. I thought, oh yeah, why don't I ask the guy about his manuscript? I mean, such an obvious question. I went in the next day and he said, oh, I haven't written a book yet. I'm only, I only tell my kids stories before they go to bed at night. And I thought, what? This guy's been criticizing me for weeks on end for all of the info I'd brought in. And he hasn't even written anything yet, but he was willing to criticize stuff. And I thought, what are his, what's, he, what's his kids gonna grow up like to find out that his old, their old man isn't really practicing what he preaches? So anyway, I was married back in those days and I said to my then wife, I said, that's it, I'm going to write a book. And I placed an ad in a magazine, a singles magazine, because I was writing a book about how to meet people. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd uh, uh, written uh, a book, which was how to meet people and make friends anywhere. But before I'd even written it, the first word, I produced an ad, which was a whole, um, a uh, whole third of a page ad uh, that went into a magazine and prepaid for that. So it was two months out. So I had to produce a result. <laughs> so for the next six weeks, uh, I wrote the book, got it published. Yep. And bingo, there was money in the mailbox uh, as soon as the, even before the, uh, the magazine was released because it went out to a lot of people that were subscribers. And bingo, I was in the publishing field. The funny thing was, the moment that I'd written that book, I was invited to give talks everywhere. Yep. I started meeting other authors who knew a lot more about writing books than I did. Yep. And they said, David, did you know you could do this? Did you know you could do this? Did you know you could do that? Did you know you could get an ISBN number for your book? Yep. I said, you know, I just took notes. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of criticism with my first book as well. It wasn't yep. all bouquets. There were a few brickbats as well because my mm -hmm. book it'd have a few controversial elements to it. Mm, that's good, it's good to be controversial. <laughs> it is in a way, and I wasn't even attempting to necessarily be controversial, although I do use that as a technique to get on the media, yep. um, as in radio and TV. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I found that uh, some of my material might have actually gone up against psychologists of the day, which was in fact the case. Mm. I got a bit of a dressing down from one particular expert and I basically shelved promoting everything for about a whole year off the back of that criticism. Then once I came out of that, I went back into it with gutso and I managed to get my book into several different mail or book mail order houses. And whenever I gave talks, people would say, oh, I've already got your book. Um, I've just never met you before. <laughs> That's good to hear. And that led to writing my second book, which was Attracting Passionate Encounters, which was a more substantial book, yep. which had an ISBN number and all of that other stuff yep. uh, six years later. And then things really took off. Yep. When I had a, like I should say, a proper book, uh, you know, the media were pursuing me, which was really great because that helped me fill up seminars and everything. Mm. It was fantastic. It was fantastic also because... I had people write back to me saying, I read your book several times over. 
and some sections of the book several times over because that really related to my experience, blah, 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 blah. And I thought, wow, that's really neat. I'm really hitting the mark here. <laughs> so it's, I, I would recommend everyone to consider writing a book. It is a great way how to get a lot of um, good ideas off your chest and, and you never know who whose lives you're going to touch out there. That's very true. Yeah. So how long did it take to write your first book? My first book took me six weeks. It was only a 24 page book. Yep. My second book took me three months, but it was in A5 format. It worked out to be 140 pages, yep. 141 pages yep. uh, with illustrations throughout the book. Um, so that was really kind of neat. But the, I suppose the big thing is I wanted it to be a kind of teaching format. So there was quite a lot of summaries in the book and exercises in the book that people could read through and take action on uh, to do with um, helping them create romance or create dates and so forth like that to interact with people. Mm -hmm. So obviously when I started advertising in the various different singles magazines, it was really quite a surprise what kind of results uh, people came back to me with. Yeah. Uh, uh, because there was a lot of material there that my first book didn't cover, but I knew I had to cover a lot more material in my second book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Nice. Yeah. So, so are, you, are you planning to write more books in the future? Or? Yeah, look, I've always got uh, various different books uh, there. Look, in the last uh, 10 years, uh, 12 years ago, I'd had a goal to write 10 books over between 2010 to 2020. Mm -hmm. But I failed that goal and ended up writing uh, well over 50 books. Uh, what, I've, what I've got in mind is at the moment, there's some uh, political uh, thriller series books that I'm working on at the moment. Plus, I'm also working on um, another nonfiction book to do with uh, events and how mm -hmm. people can run events. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, what I'm working on just at, at the moment and uh, making good progress on that particular front yes mm. okay cool sounds interesting yeah so yeah <clears throat> so david tell me tell me um so why did you suddenly become a youtuber like i've seen your videos it looks pretty it looks pretty uh, good your videos very professional so what got you into it uh there was a few things uh, i felt that longer term if i needed to build a profile and like, I've got a lot of things that I can teach. And I saw what others were teaching online and I thought, look, I've really got to give this a go. I had previously ran uh, a YouTube channel, uh, uh, several YouTube channels back in 2010. Uh, however, the editing techniques and the standard that was required to be on YouTube then was much, much lower than it is today. Today, in order to get noticed, you have to have a much higher editing content Mm. So uh, I've put myself through both learning how to edit better, how to film better. Uh, also, uh, it helped my confidence a lot with learning a lot more how to use Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, a whole range of different things, things that I used to push aside before uh, because I thought, yeah, I already know this stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, because there's a quality standard there with YouTube, I thought, well, uh, look, surely I should be able to punch through the glass ceiling there and make a result here. And in the process, I learn a lot more about what I'm capable of and also to tune into what people really want to, um, uh, to watch. Uh, so I've made a lot of my videos uh, easy to find through search engine optimization on YouTube. After all, it's connected to its own by Google. So if you make your uh, video content uh, searchable through, uh, uh, through Google and, and YouTube uh, through the right keywords and so forth, it's time well invested. Mm. The other thing is too, you've got to make it entertaining and interesting. You've got to give people a little bit of something that they wouldn't otherwise get elsewhere yep. and put your little bit of a twist on it that is your particular signature information. And that's what I find by making deliberate content works really, really well. Uh, so somewhere down the track before this year's out, I'll probably run uh, a little seminar on the topic of what I've discovered being on YouTube for 
uh, like in the current era, uh, for the last say uh, six months, and uh, and I believe there's a lot of things there which I've been able to understand by going through the process in in this time period. Yeah, so you're most welcome to attend. <laughs> Sounds good. No worries. So yeah, um, so how do you normally uh, think about your content? Like what what have you been talking about? And how did you how did you find out about this content to talk about? Look, fortunately, I've applied what I learned to YouTube much the same as what I applied to writing books. Uh, there's a quote from a movie, uh, which is uh, uh, All the President's Men. And the quote from the movie is a spot where their leads have gone dry on a story to do with the Watergate thing. And they're talking with the chief editor of the, of the Washington Post and uh, and they say um, you know this has gone dry this has gone dead we can't get this and we haven't had any luck with blah 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 and he says we'll get some in other words get lucky in other words it's a case of you got to treat looking at content as though you're producing a production schedule and that's how i look at books i look at the case of don't wait to be insp inspired um work out what your content schedule will be weeks in advance and work on that. So always come up with ideas and detailed plans for those ideas and look at some kind of structure or pegs on a, um, on a clothing line. And you may have different pages of content coming off the back of that. So, uh, you know, it's being proactive about finding things rather than waiting around for some idea to hit you on the head. Interesting, nice. So, so tell me about your first time experience of doing video. Like, are you camera shy, or like, how how did you get like, how did you improve uh, this? Again? I suppose one thing that was working in my favour is, as you well know, um, <laughs> Toastmasters, public speaking, and so forth like that. Yeah, it goes back to uh, 1982 when I ran my very first uh, seminars that I was running. The year before that. I had joined up to a, a breakfast, business breakfast club yep. called SWAP. Yep. So I was used to getting up and giving a thought of the day at each weekly meeting, as well as, you know, giving a five minute member spot occasionally. Hmm. So maybe say the first year doing that. And then the following year in 1982, I thought, um, I want to run a seminar. So I organized a six week training course yep. for uh, on the topic of selling it was called the successful selling course that i created yeah now what i did was i wasn't a speaker on the whole course it was six monday nights in a row yeah and i had different guest speakers for each night yep. now two of those speakers i had to pay out some real money for because yep. they were professional speakers yeah the other speakers all spoke for free but i didn't get dummies along i got some top talent yep. and this was in the town of wagga wagga yeah what i did was I used to introduce the speakers each night, yep. as well as uh, getting an audience of around about 30 people or more into my audience. Yep. I went on to, I did radio advertising and TV advertising on yep. a very tiny budget. It, it was possible. Yep. And I managed to also get interviewed on the radio and also in the newspaper as well. Mm -hmm. So I believe there's a case of if you take ownership of an idea, you will overcome whatever you have to overcome. <laughs> and if that's a little bit of fear, hey, look, it, you know, if you're enthusiastic about something, you're not going to be worried about whether there's a camera stuffed in your face <laughs> or if there's a microphone shoved in front of you and you've got a whole breakfast audience of, um, you know, 40,000 people listening to you. It's not going to scare you off. But if you're indecisive, well, then I believe everything will probably get to you. Mm. indecisiveness and and so forth and not being willing to take ownership of of your idea will scare anybody off mm. very well said nice that's very yeah. cool it's cool so uh so, so, so second last question i want to ask you is um how do you build trust with people how do you connect with people what's your hints and tips on uh, connecting with people and socializing with people uh Yep, that's a good question. Uh, look, some of the ways how I find works really, really well with um, 
connecting and, and uh, building that trust with people is frequency of your visits. Like, so for example, when I was in my early days going out and meeting people, either at business meetings or at social gatherings, like uh, before I wrote my second book, I wanted to go out and research what was happening in the singles scene without letting on that I was writing a book, apart from maybe the lady that ran the dinner parties at a couple of the places that I was going to um, in the suburbs of Melbourne. Anyway, what I noticed was, was that, um, and this was one thing that I applied to myself was, because I was a regular at one particular dinner party, the ladies that came along got to see me as, well, he's here all the time, so, and he dresses well, you know, I dressed really well at each event. I didn't dress sloppy or anything like that. Uh, okay, unlike today, I was wearing a tie at every meeting, whereas some of the people who would show up didn't seem to go to that much trouble. So I believe that dressing well was part of it. Um, the other thing was, was that just simply taking the confidence to go up and talk to someone and then not let it go from there, say, hey, would you like to meet for a coffee later on? Uh, but work out a specific day when you could meet, say, what are you free next Saturday or a free Wednesday? Would you like to meet for a coffee? Uh, blah, blah, blah. I know that you live in the suburb near to me. That kind of thing. So it's just being the confidence to take it to that next step right then and there, rather than just getting a phone number blindly and then hoping that you're going to connect later on when people will naturally have their fears and their level of um, trust will, um, will deplete. Um, the other thing is too is if you take, rather than attend meetings, why not run a meeting? So I found that, um, and this is probably because when I was in the breakfast club, I found myself in the early days in the brekkie club um, taking over committee positions because the president of the club, particularly when I was living in Doncaster in Melbourne, mm. uh, the president of the club had to go off to Adelaide to work there for the company that he was working for for several months. So he nominated me to be the president, the, the vice president to, to stand in. So not only did I have to run the meetings, but I had to write, create the newsletter, ring up people on a Monday night, make sure they'd be there on Tuesday. And the funny thing is hard as it was because the meetings had to happen rain, hail or shine, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, regardless of the weather, whatever happened, ring up, confirm the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> if I nicked off up to Sydney and then flew back, I still had to be there first thing at, at uh, six thirty in the morning mm. for a seven o'clock start for the Tuesday, and that kind of responsibility makes it all happen. Mm. And I believe that if you're going to create trust, it's the frequency of you doing the same thing over and over again and always being found there yeah. will automatically give people that assurity that you're not a you're not fly by night, you're always going to be there. Yep. And they will then see you as being someone who, well, maybe I can go up and speak to him or her and ask for some advice, or maybe I can go up and chat with them. I feel like they can relate to me. So it's it's by the frequency, I believe, gives people that level of assurance that they require. Mm. Interesting, very well said. Thanks for uh, sharing your few tips and hints. So it's really cool. So yeah, uh, David, that brings me to the last question. Yeah. So, um, are you on social media? How can the viewers today uh, find out more about you? How to connect with you? How to follow you more? Can you can you tell me are you on, on your new? How do people uh, connect with you on social media? Certainly, certainly. Thanks, Sam. Uh, yes. Look, I'm on Facebook. Uh, so just a matter of connecting with David Newton. Uh, I'm also on YouTube as well, but. The link's probably easier if um, if we place those in the links down below. Yep. I'm also on li LinkedIn as well. So once again, yes, we can put that as a link uh, down below. Yeah. And uh, I've got a couple of websites as well. Yeah. Look, largely a lot of people might be interested in, in either my social events or my business events. So yep. it might be worthwhile just connecting with me first and then work out which one of my events might be suitable for you to come along to to mix and mingle and meet new people, uh, whether that's in the business world or in the social area. And uh, uh, yeah, and once again, if you're in, always interested in education and so forth, there's a lot of things I love talking with people about uh, learning new things. Mm. Well, I said, David, thanks for uh, 
So yeah, uh, thanks for your time, David. Uh, so viewers, you know how to connect with David Newton. He's a great guy. And follow his YouTube, his channel, his social media channels to follow him. It's, a, it's very good. So yeah, David, had a good time with you. And uh, that's the ends, the ends of the interview today. Uh, thank, and thanks for your time again. I hope to see you again sometime. And uh, yeah, looking forward to... Yeah, look, uh, next year, in the year 2023, we can look at... Um... Uh, I'd love to have you along as uh, a guest at uh, some of my business events because I believe you'd be able to uh, help share with those people how they can break the ice. Yep. Uh, and uh, particularly in business gatherings, people have lots of different things that they are, uh, uh, need a little bit of an extra nudge about. Uh, it would be great to have you as, an, uh, as a guest at my business meetings. Sounds good. Looking forward yeah. to it. Looking forward to the new year, 2023. It's yeah, August, it's August already. Don't you think it's time flies right now? <laughs> sure does. <laughs> yeah, COVID. So yeah, uh, thanks for that, David. And uh, nice talking to you. Hope you have a good week uh, to follow. And yeah, looking forward to seeing you soon. Perfect. All thanks right, very David. much, Sam. And everyone, love to look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, sounds good. Bye. Yeah.